So welcome. I am Nadia Colburn and I'll be leading this meditation. I often bring together meditation and writing and sometimes I bring in yoga. And I do this because I really am committed to integrating our mind, bodies, and spirits. And that sounds like a really um, kind of easy phrase, but it's actually in our world unusual. We live in such a fragmented way with so many boundaries. And I believe that when we can come together internally, we're better able to be forces of integration and interbeing around us in the world um, and bring down some of those barriers. So often we think of writing as being, you know, kind of outward focused and meditation as being inward focused. And at that intersection of communication with others and communication with their oneself, there's a great energy and a great power. And when we can touch that point of communication, that, that intersection, then we see that this work that we're doing is not only important for us, like we're taking time out of our day so we can do something. Sometimes we might feel, oh, this is indulgent. I'm taking time for myself. We see that this work is really important and really crucial, not only for us, but for our world, that we come to that point of intersection where we can connect inner and outer so that we're more able to be present and be responsive in ways that are helpful instead of just reactive or violent or putting up walls, either within ourselves or with others. So um, this is the work that I do. I do it with one-on-one uh, -on -one in classes in person and also in my online class, Align Your Story, which is really helping you write what you want to write, what, write what you need to write, bringing in yoga and meditation. And that class is going to be starting again in a few weeks. So I can tell you more about that. If you want, you can just reach out to me by email and you can see more on my website. Uh, www.alignyourstory.com is the course site. So enough about that. Um, at the end, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be leading three 15-minute sessions, starting out every 15 minutes on the 15 minutes. And then at the end of the third one, I'll open it up to discussion and questions, and we can have more conversation. Come into your body, bring your attention back to your breath. Feel your spine. Get comfortable in your own breath. I'm gonna start with a alternate breathing meditation that I often start with because this is such a good way to come into balance, to balance the left and the right side of our bodies and brains. So we'll block off the right nostril and breathe in through the left. And then block off the left and breathe out through the right. Breathing in through the right. blocking it off and out through the left. So you'll breathe out and then in, and then switch nostrils. Continue at your own pace. Let the breath just relax. Find a natural pacing, maybe slowing it down just a little bit in a natural, unforced way. And you can bring your attention to your breath and to this point between the eyebrows.
Finish one more cycle of breath. And my theme for today is connection. And so I want you to be able to connect those different sides of your body, the mind and the, and the, the body as well. And I want you also to connect with whatever it is that you're working on. So if you're already working on a writing project, you can use, go back to that writing project in this time. If you have a question that you want to ask, you can use these sessions to explore that question. And I'll also be offering you some prompts. So I'm going to read you a poem. This is by um, this visionary writer, Mirabai, who lived in the 16th century. And it's translated by the poet Jane Hirschfield in the book, Women in Praise of the Sacred. She writes, O oh friend, understand. The body is like the ocean, rich with hidden treasures. Open your inmost chamber and light its lamp. Within the body are gardens, rare flowers, peacocks, the inner music. Within the body, a lake of bliss. On it, the white soul swans take their joy. So I'm going to give you time now to write. I'll mute myself also and take this time to write. And we're going to, this is going to be a short writing time now, just five minutes, and then we're going to come back for another meditation and then with more writing. And of course, you can continue this writing in the next writing session.
Ah, uh, thank you, Anita. Okay. Can you hear me now? I needed to unmute myself. So we're gonna come back together in another meditation. And you can return to the work you were working on in a few minutes. Of course, you can continue to write and use the, med the writing time as a meditation if you want. Otherwise, join me in coming back to your breath. Reconnecting with your body. Sometimes this can feel challenging. Sometimes there's a storm brewing and make space for that if that's the case. And just be curious and patient and compassionate. And allow whatever is here in the moment to be here in this moment and know it's not permanent. We're all on a journey that's always changing. But underneath the storms, and this is a very stormy period in the world, there will be blue skies again. So you can spend a few more minutes just connecting with your breath. And when you're ready, you can either go back to what you were working on before, or I invite you to speak from one part of your body. Whatever part that first comes to mind, Either speak from that part or write a letter to that part. Or if you had a question, see what that part of your body has to do with that question. Your mind might say, that's a silly assignment but I invite you to just see what it's like. Or if it's not working for you, do what feels right to you in the moment. Writing from the connection with yourself and from the present moment.
and take another minute and then we'll come back together in our third meditation. Come back to your breath. Reconnect with your body. See if it feels any different now. See if you can take the language part of yourself now away and just be present noticing without the need for language to come back in. So often our meditation practices don't bring any language in, but we're language using beings. And so if we can learn to go back and forth with language and out of language into being present and into our thinking mind, then we're really able to bring this into our lives with us in a different way. So, Let's just come back to the breath for a few minutes. Inhaling, breathing in. I'm aware of my body breathing in. Breathing out. I'm aware of my body breathing out. Breathing in. Aware of my body. Breathing out. I'm aware of my body. And now I invite you to find one place in your body to bring your attention. So the breathing in, the breathing out meditation, that's from Thich Nhat Hanh. But I'm taking this next meditation from the Vipassana tradition in which we train our minds to focus very, very carefully on individual places on the body. So in the training, the first three days of a 10-day retreat, you bring all of your attention to this area right here on the nose between the upper lip and the nostrils. For three days, you bring all of your attention there. But I'm going to invite you, and then you go down the whole body with your mindful attention. Because we, we need to be mindful of something. We need to bring our attention to something. So perhaps the body part, if you were writing from or to a body part before, perhaps you want to just bring your attention just to that body part. It could be a part that feels uncomfortable. It could also be a part that feels comfortable or a part that you can't really feel, like your elbow. What is it like to bring your attention to that part of your body? Or it could be, your, it could be an inner part. It could be your heart if you want. And we're going to just sit together. This is often like asking us to use a muscle that we don't necessarily have yet. But just see what it's like to try to bring your attention, noticing as carefully as possible anything that you can perceive in 
the body part that you want to pay attention to. And if it feels too hard, maybe go to a body part that feels more perceivable if it's frustrating. So for example, your feet, you might feel your feet on the floor. You can really feel them. So we'll practice with this for a few minutes together. If your mind wanders off, bring it back gently. Just be curious. And be patient. and be accepting. Come back, bring your attention back if it wanders off. If you don't have any sensation, that's also okay. You might want to move around the area a little bit. You can also, for example, if you're paying attention to your foot, maybe move your toe a little bit and feel what that feels like. When you're ready, you can come back to writing. You can work on whatever you were working on before. You can come back to any question that you asked. Or you can try to write from that, that body part and that experience. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to give you six random words. And sometimes having something particular to work with can be helpful. Maybe they're exactly the wrong words and they'll spark other words in you. Or maybe one word will stand out. Or maybe you'll have a way to use all six words. So the words are hot, sorcerer, point, green, cotton, and plum. And for those of you who are on the computer, I'll also write them in the chat. So hot, Sorcerer, point, green, cotton, and plum. This might seem really strange, but really interesting writing can come from bringing in some seemingly random words.
And again, take another minute here. And of course, come back to these pieces and these practices after this call. Take another nice deep breath. Reconnecting. So often when we write, when we're in our brain, we disconnect from our body. So when we can remember to bring that thinking creative part of ourself into that mindful breathing and to the connection with the body all kinds of new pathways open. So often in our regular lives, we just go down the same routine, the same routine every day, not only externally, but also internally. Our minds just go through the same patterns. We have the same kind of paradigms. So by stopping the mind in meditation, by rebalancing the breath, by free focusing our attention, and then by opening up to our creativity, sometimes bringing in these random words, we open up these new amazing channels. And it's in those openings, that's exactly what creativity is. It's that place where change happens. And we live in a world that's very kind of um, uninterested these days in the humanities. But if we don't have the humanities, we're not really creating the conditions for really deep change, because that's where the, even the possibility for that kind of change comes from. So thank you all for being here. Um, I'm gonna be starting my Align Your Story online class again on September 22nd. Uh, the early bird red, Discounted registration ends tomorrow. If you're on this call and you're hearing about that course for the first time and you want a few more days to think about it, I can extend that for a few more days. Just send me an email that you are here on the call and you're interested. Um, I'm very reachable by email. Uh, you can reach me at NadiaColburn at gmail.com. You can reach me through my website, Nadia Colburn. Um, and I'm going to unmute you all. I'll just say one more word about that online class. It's really a way it's eight modules with close readings of great authors, uh, lessons, yoga, and meditation so that you can come into an integrated way of writing and connecting with your own creativity, your own story, both for your life on the page and your life off the page. So um, I'm really excited about it because I put together like all of my different interests in that, in that course. So um, I like to share it with other people. I am unmuting you all, and I would love to hear from you. Um, I mean, how do I do this now? Manage participants. Unmute all. Okay. Um, I would love to hear from you, and maybe you want to ask questions. Maybe you want to um, share your work or share your experience of these meditations and writing times. So I think what I'm gonna do actually is ask you individually to mute yourselves. Otherwise I'm hearing my own echo. <laughs> and, but then you can unmute yourself. And so if you have anything that you wanna say, I'm gonna just, actually I'm gonna go back and mute. I'm gonna, 
unmute you all actually because that the feedback was a little strange but you can each unmute yourself you have that capacity really easily just hit unmute um and and i'd love to hear from you as i said any questions any observations or it would be really fun to hear some of your writing especially with those words um, it's always really neat to hear what different people have done with the same words and don't be shy about beginning i can go great thank you jamie yeah i love the words um i wrote what i usually been write what i've been working on it went semi-okay um i don't the second one was okay but the third one was um, my knee is hot so hot it feels like a sorcerer has pointed his magic sword at it and set it on fire the green goo okay it was really blue did not help the plum shaped swelling on the right side nor did the cotton covering that helped protect me from the icy cold pack you have been using. From your previous writing, I'm telling you to learn to stand up for yourself, to let go of your pain, anger, and judgment, for I am staying until you learn to let go of who you really thought you were. Thank you. That's very powerful, powerful words and powerful address. Yeah, and it brought back the previous writing about, I wrote from the, po the point of the knee, so it brought me back to that particular, the previous writing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hmm. And may your knee not be swollen. <laughs> <laughs> I get to let go of a few things, I guess. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Yes, I can send, say something. Um, I was very, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And can okay. you introduce yourself? I don't know. Yes, I am. I am Marianne Barton. And uh, I'm, I'm joining your class for the first time. I heard about you through Grub Street, where I've taken a number of courses. I'm working on a novel that's set in a New England textile mill. And one of the things I'm doing for the novel is learning about where the cotton came from mm. that um, was woven together with wool to make a particular flannel cloth during the Civil War. And of course, where that cotton came from was the enslaved pickers in the South. And so I was utterly struck that cotton was one of those six words and um, I can share just a little um, let's see I am blown away I wrote let's see I'm sorry I'm gonna get this up I am blown away that one of the six random words Nadia gave us is cotton cotton the fluffy stuff that blooms on cotton plants in the south and is harvested now by machine but then by enslaved persons picking it by hand and stuffing it into long woven sacks that they drag between rows in the field bowl of cotton bale of cotton negro songs spirituals gospel bell ringing sounds from tiny churches tolling the bell to bring black people to service on Sunday. Where did enslaved persons worship in those tiny southern churches? At the back of the sanctuary? Up on the balcony if the church was big enough for a balcony? Did some plantations or towns or workplaces then have churches where only people of African descent worshipped? Where is cotton in the fabric of America? Thank you. Thank you. It's so um, amazing how these um, synchronicities happen. It just goes to show also though, that everything really, it, we really inter are, you know, everything is connected and they're just these amazing synergies everywhere and also sometimes terrifying synergies, right? Um, 
And yeah, thank you. Anyone else? You could also, as I said, you know, if you have any questions, not necessarily about um, this writing session, but about writing or meditation in general, I mean, not necessarily I can answer all questions, but um, I might be able to, or someone else on the call might be able to, because, but collectively we have a lot of, um, a lot of insight and wisdom and knowledge here. Um, Nadia? Mm -hmm. I, w I wanted to read what I wrote, if there's time, people want right. to hear. I'm stuck. I've been writing and rewriting the same things over and over for like 20 years. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm going to, I think you're Therese. I can't see you. Oh, yes. Hi. Sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. My camera, yeah. my um, computer is broken, so you can't see me. But I just, I wanted to share because I was sitting here being stuck and your words unstuck me a little bit. So that's what I, that's what I, I liked what happened when I put your, when I stopped writing the same stupid thing over and over mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to read, I liked what happened from your words. Great. So should I read? I'd love that. Okay. It says, it's called Sorceress. I am scared. I feel safe inside my body. I visit the mountain pond. I imagine the water lilies that bloom there. Now I will know to look for the peacocks and soul swans. If I could feel safe in the world, my house, my village, as I have learned to feel safe in my body, I would be happy. When I think of returning to my village house in Greece, I am scared. I am scared because there is someone in the village who is very angry at me. He is angry because I won the lawsuit. He does not have the right to drive through my land. The court officer installed a metal fence around my property. If he breaks through it, as he has broken my fences in the past, he will go to jail, but I am scared. I am scared to see members of his family when I walk through the village. I am scared of them yelling at me or giving me horrible looks like they did in the courtroom. But there is a much bigger fear. It is a, the fear of my own guilt. All the things I did wrong, buying the land in the first place, building the house, planting the oleanders, watering them and having my two-year-old daughter help, bringing my husband, putting up a fence, planting trees, daring to make a home for myself on a Greek hillside they could never accept had gone out of the family. Perhaps I should embrace my evilness. I am the evil sorceress among the cypress trees, lurking in my house on days so hot the cicadas explode and words explode from the point of my pen. The leaves of the well-watered fig are green and the hard plums ripen to bursting. I wear a flowing cotton dress woven on my own loom. My hair falls down my back and I turn men into swine. Keep going. That's, you got it, girl. <laughs> thanks for the word, thanks for the words. <laughs> yeah, I wanna read that book. <laughs> I wanna read all of these books. I, I just, um, I've been talking to Therese about this project, so, um, yeah. Thanks. Loved it, Therese, thank you. That was thank great. You. Thank you. Who wrote the thing about how good fences make good neighbors? Robert Frost. There's a lot of wisdom in that, right? How do we have appropriate boundaries? You know? Like appropriate boundaries are also really important. Yeah, as Robert Frost reminds us, good fences make good neighbors. <laughs> When, can I ask uh, Marianne, Marianne, your your book, your textile, your um, your book is that how close is that to being written? When will we get to see it? Or are you in the beginning? I'm um, beginning over. So I had gone eight eight or nine chapters in and then began over, and so I don't know how long it will take. I have I have little little bits and pieces, but but we'll see, we'll see. And can you use some of what you had before when you became a Oh, writer? oh yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just um, reimagining, but I'm in that same world. 
Yeah. And uh, I, I went through the, um, the uh, Grub Street uh, novel generator program. So I spent nine months and now I'm sort of starting over and it's emerging much more beautifully than I had expected. Oh, it sounds... It sounded beautiful and so timely and yeah, both timeless and timely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm very touched. Yeah. Thank you for the question. You're welcome. <laughs> I've been, at, I've taken novel classes at Grub Street over the years too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Anyone else before we get off the call? I could read mine. Great, is that Alistair? It's Alistair who never says anything to anyone. <laughs> well, please, <laughs> please read. Yes, that would be great. I haven't like proofread this or anything but okay um dear left jaw again you bother me why do you insist on being so troublesome first when i took my first narrative medicine class with nancy and judy and all those wonderful other students I planned to write and speak clearly on the last day about my head injury back when I was 15. However, one of my left teeth hurt a great, great deal and made the left side of my face swollen. Like Nadia, Judy also instructed us wannabe writers to select a portion of our body and write a letter to it or from its perspective. Probably should be point of view. Even though I had planned to, to write about my head injury, the tooth problem seemed to take precedence. So I wrote about it. The out of town Root, uh, the out-of-town root canal with the kind nurse who had four years ago lost her daughter in the same kind of car accident I survived happened uneventfully. I felt terrible, um, but I knew that there was nothing I could do. Now, you, Jaw, seem to have trigeminal neuralgia. This means 24 hours of pounding, should be of a pounding headache. That seems to be worse when I lie down. A very painful left jaw and a bad pain about four or five inches down my back. And that's all I had time to write, but I could go on. Thank you. I'm uh -huh. happy to hear you writing and reading your work aloud. And um, and there was that other amazing synergy in there with, you know, just people meeting with similar stories. You know, the nurse who had lost her daughter in a car accident and just the amazing um, power that's everywhere. The amazing stories that are unfolding around us all the time and in our bodies. So I, I really hope you get relief from your, in your jaw. Um, the first time that the doctor can see me about it is on October the 4th. That doesn't feel right. Well, it's only September 8th. Right. Is there anyone else you could see? No. I mean, the general practitioner could prescribe some um, 
painkillers, but they can't really do that because of my head injury. Oh. I mean, my only other hope is to see my neurologist and have an appointment with him in like a week or two um, because he is on vacation and maybe he'll be able to prescribe a different, um, what do you call it? Well, a different drug that like, it's a, they're different seizure drugs and hopefully a different one will control the electrical impulses to my brain enough that this won't hurt so much. Uh, I'm, I really, really wish for you a lot of relief from it. And um, yeah, I'm sure we all wish you a lot of relief. And you know, your writing is really powerful. So of course we want the pain to go away. But if it's there, write to it, write from it. See what it, see what it has to say. And, you know, I, Alistair and I have also been talking about um, the medical kind of world not really listening to patients very well. And this is an opportunity for you to, to speak in ways like that. Obviously, the doctors aren't, you know, in, in not giving you an appointment for so long, aren't listening in ways they need to listen. So to take, to take the power that you can take. I want to give you that encouragement, give you the magic sorcerer wand to take that power. Do you think you could give the wand, that wand, to um, Harry Potter? <laughs> that would make my mouth feel better? I wish. If I but I, I really would. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> so again, thank you all very much. I'm going to be leading this. Um, it will be different meditations, different writing prompts next Friday and then the following Friday at noon. Um, so I hope you can join us. If you have friends who want to join us, let them know. Um, and... As I said, reach out to me by email, and I hope you stay in touch, and thank you again for taking this time in your day, and I really, um, it's, it's special for me, actually, to do this. Like, the writing that I do in this time is different from the writing I would do on my own, and I feel like I get this special group energy from doing it, so thank you again, and have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend, and um, wishing, you know, safety and freedom from pain to everybody here on this call and not on the call as well. Thanks Thank you, Nadia. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.